May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. What an interesting gospel that I don't get to preach on. (laughs) Okay. Um, What I thought I would do this year was give my rector's report now to maximize the amount of people who hear it. So the 830 parish already heard it. But that does not mean you are now absolved from going to vestry. It just means that vestry will now be that much shorter. And there will be um, uh, printed copies of this available um, during vestry as well, in case you want to, well, you can decide for yourself whether you want to read this again. (laughs) 2013 was a truly inspiring year for me as incumbent of Epiphany Anglican Church. This is a parish with so many gifts that it is intimidating to attempt to describe all the great things that can happen in this parish in one year. We have one of the most exciting online presences in the diocese. Our choir won the Kiwanis Festival this past year. We embrace Christian education in bold new ways. We love to worship not just through ancient tradition, but through new kinds of music and new kinds of worship. We've successfully built a financial future for our gift projects this past year. We care for those in our community, and we focus so much of our fundraising to reach out to those throughout the world who hunger and thirst for the grace of God. We have so many things to be thankful for as a parish, and I am thrilled to begin 2014 as incumbent of Epiphany Anglican Church. Okay, now I have subheadings. One, worship and liturgy. Beginning in 2013, we did a lot of really wonderful things in worship. Gillian Keane was wonderful as your worship chair, bringing to me the concerns of the parish and offering creative and wise counsel in crafting worship. Your lay readers, Kelly Jessup and Jerry Green, also provided their unique talents to help plan services, including our Monday Thursday service last year and preaching and taking services throughout the year. Chun Sun Park continued to offer her incredible gifts of music leadership as we kept throwing her all kinds of liturgical curveballs. Steve Heiter completed the illuminated letters for our beautiful service folder series. We now have all the service folders we need, including weddings, and we're, but we're missing funerals. So I suppose he's not quite done. And Deb Sutter and I have worked to build an intergenerational worship series that honors our Anglican tr- worship tradition, while also finding a way for us to worship together as one community from time to time. And throughout the various changes and traditions we have celebrated together, our altar guild, our dedicated servers, and many other dedicated parishioners have come together each week to make these wonderful traditions grow and thrive. In 2014, we're going to continue to build upon all the work that we did in 2013. First and foremost is starting what I'm describing as the Servers Guild 2.0, We're working with our worship chair and Sharon Sagan and Stephanie Boyd to craft a new order of servers that can help lead and shape all the new liturgical traditions we've been forming at Epiphany. There are so many tasks and details maintained by myself, by the altar guild and a few others, including preparation for communion, lots of really fascinating sound equipment things. There's a weird battery under there that's not a pipe bomb. It's a fascinating, I don't know what it is. There are a lot of preparations uh, that we need for the intergenerational services and other special services that we've set up, and we need to sort of reincorporate that with our servers guild. So we're going to be meeting with a, with a small worship team to construct the new routines and patterns, and then I'm looking forward to meeting with all those interested and some recruited individuals shortly to form some of these new traditions. This might sound like it's a lot more work for our servers, and it is. <laughs> but it'll result in smooth, worry-free worship preparation, and it'll also give a lot of people that are doing some things every single Sunday a chance to simply come through the doors and worship and and leave and not have to worry about all the odds and ends. So if you're serving, you're working really, really hard, but if you're not serving, 
you should be able to, and you're not me, you should be able to come in and pray and worship and, and leave with uh, a lot of work that you might have to do done on Saturday. That's the idea. So that's going to be the Servers Guild 2.0. Theological education. This is a community that has truly embraced Christian education. Last year, we completed a Yale course on the early Middle Ages. My initial plan did not involve running all 26 weeks of this course, but rather eight. Eight highlight lectures over the course of Lent. But the combination of Tasty Soup, Fellowship, and an incredible teacher by the name of Paul Friedman charmed us, and we found ourselves taking in all 26 lectures, a Lenten series that concluded well past Easter into June. And we all graduated with diplomas with legit Latin on them. And we learned a great deal about the fall of the Roman Empire, the early church, monasticism, and a thing or two about really, really violent medieval kings. In addition to our Yale course, we continued our reflection groups on Wednesday mornings and evenings. As a member of both of those reflection groups, we cover an enormous amount of ground. In the morning, we talk about the readings for the coming week. And in the evening, we've started exploring different books in the Bible, um, reading them from beginning to end. We recently finished the book of Acts and Paul's letter to the Romans, and we've just started reading through Genesis. Uh, in the future, in 2014, we're hoping to, to complete, um, just before Easter, a second EL course on the New Testament. It has proved to be just as stimulating and challenging as last year's course, and, and we've, each of us have been challenged to look at the Bible in new ways. I personally leave every week just uh, knowing something completely new and wonderful about each book. I'm also hoping to become a part of more reflection groups. There's simply no substitute for good, honest conversation uh, about matters important to us. I've been astounded by the quality of conversation and theological insight that we are all capable of having, and I'm hoping we can find ever more ways of gathering together, not just on Sundays, but throughout uh, the week and throughout the year to share and discuss things important to us as Christians living in an always challenging world. So I'll say it to you, we, there's a few groups that we started in the fall and we've been kind of meeting sporadically, but speak to me if, if there's a group that you might, even if it's sort of peers or friends that you have um, uh, in, in the parish or even outside the parish, it's, there's really no substitute for meeting in small groups to talk about this stuff and you'd be surprised, even, even the, the group that meets every morning where we go through the lectionary Sometimes it starts out and it's like getting water out of a stone. And yet by the end of the hour, we always seem to go somewhere really interesting and fascinating. And we go and it, there's really fun. So I encourage you to think about that as well. Okay. Communications. Communications at Epiphany has been a really fun and rewarding challenge. Your communications team is made of myself, Emma Ghazali, uh, Stephanie, or is, it, is it Emma Busa now? I don't know. Anyway, Stephanie Boyd and Mark Jessup have worked hard to get the message of our church out to the world. We've built a lively Facebook page, parish website, and Twitter feed. Our presence online is dynamic, meaning it's constantly changing, thanks in part to Steph's tireless tweeting and Facebook updates. My sermons are, for better or worse, all available online going back to Advent 2012. And they can be accessed through our YouTube page or you can su subscribe to our podcast. Almost everyone I've spoken to who's visited us for the very first time says that they met us first online. The parish website has, is now described as the new back pew. And as such, it's become in incredibly important for churches to have a lively and current web presence. And your communications team has done this and is continuing to work to create a lively online extension of our lively real-life parish, so to speak. In the future, I would first encourage you to access these resources. If you aren't uh, here on Sunday, there's no reason why you can't check out the sermon. And you can also feel free to tweet us or like us on Facebook, <laughs> if that's your thing. Um, we're also hoping to extend the role of communications more extensively inwards, and find ways to make sure that everyone in our community is aware and connected with anything in our parish or in the diocese that might be relevant to you. We want to make sure that we're as good at broadcasting all the things we're doing outwards, inwards, 
as we're informing everyone who's a member of Epiphany of all the good things that are happening in our church. Uh, Being a Christian in the communication age is deeply challenging as we work to find honest, authentic ways of sharing our gospel that is true to our faith, but in the spirit of the times. And your communications team share this concern. And the work that they're doing could very well be captured what the future of church communication might look like. The wonderful thing about this kind of stuff is no one really knows what the future of church communication is. There are books written, and I guess once the book's published, it's almost out of date. And uh, it's really, really fun to be on the cutting edge of, of finding ways of communicating in, in uh, you know, 2014. It's exciting stuff. Building and maintenance. Since Christmas, every day I have walked through the doors of Epiphany and Anglican Church. My heart warms, my body tingles, and I nearly burst into song as I open our new doors. <laughs> 2013, from the perspective of building and maintenance, was the year of the doors. <laughs> and how wonderful are the new glass doors. I am very proud of our parish leadership, of Dwayne Van Alstyne as building and maintenance chair, of the corporation as they worked to find the right design, and trusted in their decision as construction was delayed. I wrote for several months, but it felt like forever. <laughs> We also must give enormous thanks to both Duane and Mike, who arrived multiple times per week. They came on Wednesdays to open for the daycare, early Sunday morning to open and close those doors with drills, with wood, and a great deal of elbow grease. And I would like to discourage anyone from damaging the two remaining wood doors (laughs) to motivate us to replace them. There are far more convenient ways to replace doors than the technique we used in the past year. Now watch something happen to those doors. Uh, Children and youth ministry. We have a robust and exciting children's and youth ministry at Epiphany. Our Sunday school faculty, led by Deb Sutter as Sunday school coordinator, do incredible things every week. The youngest members of our parish have a passion for God and a passion for learning no less intense than every other generation. Over the last year, we have worked to unite every generation in the spirit of community and prayer through our intergenerational worship services. A highlight would be our our Christmas pageant. Through events like our spaghetti dinners and trying to be a church that can live up to the idealism, passion, and intensity our youngest parishioners have for God, and for God's call for us to live with love and justice in our world. I thank our children and youth in our parish for not just calling us, but showing us how to be a church alive, spirit-led, and fearlessly engaging the world around us. Choir and music. Our parish is passionate about music. We have a dedicated choir and a passionate choir leader. We have a parish interested in hymns of every style, and especially open to new music. It has been a joy for me to come out of my very classical background and embrace all the music that is loved at Epiphany. The hymns we sing every Sunday are are often called the people's prayers. And it has been a wonderful challenge for me to offer what I can as a musician and embrace the prayers and songs that have fed and guided this parish in the recent past. My goal as incumbent of Epiphany is not to provide music leadership. Rather, my goal is to find a way to connect my own liturgical style, my priestly training, and my passion for music as a musician with the life-giving musical tradition that is nurtured and grown here at Epiphany. With Lent and Holy Week just around the corner, and the Kiwanis Festival, of course, and our impending victory, Bold words. <laughs> Glebe United's going down. <laughs> I look forward to another year of wonderful music and superb musical leadership under Chunsman. <laughs> Pastoral care and outreach. This is a parish that cares deeply for those in need, whether down the street or across the world. And within our own parish membership itself, this parish has a passion for living out 
the gospel in both word and action. Our outreach committee will have new leadership this year as Mark Jessup transitions from Deputy People's Warden to uh, helping lead the outreach committee. We have welcomed back Judy Oatway, a deacon now licensed in the Diocese of Ottawa, who was transformed by her experiences in Africa and will no doubt help shape our own attitudes and passion for international outreach. And Valerie Meyer, as our diocesan PWRDF rep and fellow parishioner, shares Judy's passion for a gospel that joins us with every person and every people throughout the world. We also welcome the pastoral care team from Cornerstone this year, which provides local outreach to our community. As Reverend Linda Postuma and Kelly Jessup are both members of that pastoral care team, we can look forward to an exciting new ways to connect as a parish with outreach in our own community. It is so exciting to be a part of a parish that has such dual passions for international outreach and for outreach in our own community um, and those living around us. And in our parish itself, I'm pleased to announce a new purpose for the rector's uh, discretionary fund. Much like the bishop's discretionary fund, which allows the bishop to discreetly offer financial support throughout the diocese where needed, you can now designate a portion of your weekly givings to the rector's discretionary fund. I don't know if it's called the rector's discretionary fund, or I'm not quite sure what the name is, but that's essentially what it is. These funds will be used on your behalf to, to care for your fellow Epiphany members. We should be able to look after those in our own community. And this fund allows for a discreet and also tax deductible way for you to care for those who worship with you every week. Administration and corporation. We are gifted at Epiphany with a gifted parish administrator and a dedicated corporation. It is always a joy to work with Cindy every week and the amount of things that she does and that she remembers on behalf of this entire community is astounding. And this past year, I've had the privilege of working with three corporation members, Jerry Green as Rector's Warden, Stephanie Boyd as People's Warden, and Mark Jessup as Deputy People's Warden. All three are t dedicated individuals who've offered this parish a significant amount of their time and their talent. Moving into 2014, Mark Jessup will continue to serve in our parish in other ways and, and through outreach and other things, also some fascinating computer accounting software things that I do not understand, but is very interesting. You can ask him about it. No. <laughs> it's like a database thing. Yeah. Uh, in addition, we should have some new members. We should have two new members of our corporation, um, a new deputy rector's warden and, and deputy people's warden following this vestry meeting, and I could not be more excited about this coming year and all that we might accomplish as a parish with such able and competent parish leadership. This is seriously a, a corporation that cares very, very deeply about this community, and it was really exciting to work with them. Gift. We're almost at the end here, just so you're aware. <laughs> I have received several requests to describe in more detail what we're doing with the gift funding. Just some background, when I first arrived last August, we almost immediately began our gift campaign. It was challenging to discern where we are headed as a parish after such a short time together, but we built a campaign around two central ideas. First was the, the perceived need for additional storage. And the second was a need for help in the area of outreach, we're thinking of an outreach worker. Well, I would like to primarily address the outreach worker, which is where the, the, the majority of our gift funding uh, is to be designated. It makes an enormous amount of sense to hire somebody for outreach, and, but, uh, but creating the right position, finding the right person is enormously important. In addition, to participate in, in uh, such a hire, for me to participate, honestly, it really required that I spend some time at Epiphany getting better acquainted with the needs of this parish and also the needs of the community in which we live. What are the needs of our local community? What kinds of outreach work need to take place around us? Do we want to hire someone to help us with struggling families, seniors, does Gloucester have a homeless population? These are all questions to which I have sought answers this past year, and I believe we're on track to transform our gift campaign into something exciting. 
The funding that we have available right now would allow us to hire someone using the clergy per diem rates, the, the daily rates that we would uh, use, for two days a week. Having a deep respect for the commitment which so many of you have given to the GIFT campaign, I want and uh, all of the GIFT leadership want to make sure that we hire the right individual whose gifts mesh with our own and with the needs of the community around us. 2014 should be an exciting year for a gift campaign as we can finally harness the work that we have done for the work in God's kingdom. In conclusion, <coughs> excuse me, I know that I have not come close to mentioning every parishioner by name and all the many, many things that this parish has done in the last year. There are so many incredible people who not only attend their parish, but lead us through word and through example. Thank you each of you so much for the gifts that you bring to this parish. Epiphany has been a true blessing for me. You have welcomed me with open arms. You've received any family or friends that have come to visit with generosity and kindness, especially the bishop, but <laughs> you might be a little biased there. I don't know. And you're dedicated to following Jesus. I pray that we find 2014 to be a great year for each of you and for our church. Amen.